Welcome to the weekly recap. We are going to do our top 10 most anticipated games. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of little things news-wise, but the big hot topic is the upcoming game Shadow of War. Yeah. And all of the um, bad press, I guess, it's getting in social media. Yeah, I saw moment. quite a bit of that. So we'll go straight into our hot topic because I'm not going to be able to help myself anyway. Um and I am probably going to end up in a rant mm -hmm. on this one. I hope so, so yeah. I'm, I'll start with you so that you've got your two cents in before mm -hmm. I go off. Um, so if you've been living under a rock, Shadow of War, which is an upcoming sequel to Shadow of Mordor, a very popular series, um, somebody found out somewhere along the line this week that it's going to have microtransactions. Mm -hmm. Everybody freaked out. This is just a disaster everybody's talking about boycotting the game <laughs> certainly not everybody but there are people talking about boycotting the game just the fact that there's one person saying that is bad um people are just spreading rumors there's even another rumor that jumped onto the coattails of the first rumor that. which is that oh well if it's got microtransactions then it's always online too which yeah. is just as crazy as the rest of it mm -hmm. so shadow of war is going to have microtransactions what do you think about that? Well, well, I mean, you know my stance on microtransactions. I've always supported them for the developers that I like. Yeah. The developers that I want to see sequels to their games or more content or more DLC. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way for developers to continue to monetize their games after release. So I feel like that's definitely a good thing for the industry as all. Well, if you support Absolutely. that kind of thing. It is optional. And I feel like that's something we need to state maybe multiple times in this video. Because, no one's forcing you. Yeah, because some of the um, some of the conversations you see out there, if you pay attention to comment sections, if you pay attention to, I uh, even saw this on Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. Twitter, uh, any of the other uh, sections where you can see this kind of thing, a lot of people seem to be missing the optional piece. And then I saw some people True. trying to make up information and say that it's not optional because um, somehow it allows you to, to beat the game. And that's not that's just not even accurate. It's have, Has it's, there ever been a game in the history of the world that you had to buy something additional to beat? There there may have been <laughs> something like that, but it's not in this game. It's not, yeah, this is a big AAA really... blockbuster title. They're not going to do something like that. That would be anti-consumer. Yeah. So they're not going to do anything like Very that. Much so. Very much optional. I personally think it's a good, a good deal. I've been doing it since... Horse Armor was announced for uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion back in Xbox 360 days, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. What about you? Yeah, I think um, similar to what you're saying, I think the biggest thing to keep in mind is these are developers who mm -hmm. we want games from. Yeah. And ultimately, these games come from profit. Mm -hmm. All of the different ways that they could come up with to secure more of their finance mm -hmm. gives us sequels. It gives us more content. It gives Definitely. us the thing that we want. And it seems like, as a community, we tend to say, well, I want a sequel, and another sequel, and bigger. I want them fast, mm -hmm. and I want them bigger, and I want them cheaper, <laughs> or the same price, and I, and apparently, I want them not to have microtransactions either. Yeah. Add it to the list. Add it to the list of things that we demand. And you can't do anything else to monetize it, and on top of all anything. those things. And you can't do anything. We don't actually want you to make money, is what people keep saying. Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunate because there are games that we wanted a sequel to and mm -hmm. it's looking like we probably won't get them. Yeah. Um, so for example, I love Sunset Overdrive. Mm -hmm. It's pretty apparent, I think, to a lot of us that we probably won't get a sequel to yeah, that one. I don't see it happening. And if I had told everybody that's doing this on Twitter right now, when Sunset Overdrive came out, if I said, if you make one purchase as a microtransaction, not everybody has to do it, but a lot of people just make one purchase, we will get a Sunset Overdrive too. How many people would have Well, done everybody that? that loved the game, I think, would have done that. So we could have yeah. had that. It's an easy thing to rationalize if you understand that. Yeah. I think some of the people that are complaining about uh, Shadow of War just aren't really thinking about it from that perspective at all. I think they're a little short-sighted in whatever agenda yeah. they have that's against developers making more money off of a game yeah. we've talked about in previous video games are staying at 59.99 you know so i mean we're keeping yeah. it at that at that price for what 15 years now we're getting Maybe a, a lot longer. of value out of these games tons of value when definitely. they're coming out yeah and you know there are a lot of people who love microtransactions who are okay with it mm. and i think it is important to mention that i really don't see shadow of war making it where well if you don't make these micro microtransaction purchases you're not going to beat the game or you're going to be at a disadvantage i really don't think a developer that big is yeah. going to do that i think I it's going to be a lot more of little trinkets i mean think of what some of the microtransactions that exist are they're cosmetic it's like characters mm. or weapon skins those are the things people spend money on half yeah. the time 
So it's not things that cause you to have lesser experience in the game. Yeah. It's just, it's a way for a developer to secure money. And these developers have a hard time making the money that they need to make. And it gets worse every year. Keyword. It's optional. Optional, yeah. optional, optional. Mm -hmm. It's optional. You don't have to buy it. Everything is optional. But it's great to have options. I Definitely. personally am a huge fan of having options. In yeah. fact, I would be more upset to know I don't have options. What yeah. if I want to have a pink dagger in Shadow of War? <laughs> and I can't have that because people don't want optional content to be in the game. Like, that's obviously exaggerated, but really. Yeah. You know, and as an entire industry, we want developers to do well. We want them to to not only profit, but to secure their profit with extra things like Definitely. that to make sure that they can, you know, do whatever they need to do to make another game for us. Mm -hmm. And then we're mad when they don't make another game for us. And, yeah. you know, it's I even saw people talking about, well, maybe they should just increase the price overall and then not do A little bit of that. That's forced, mm -hmm. Right. Am I wrong? That would this? definitely be forced. If you if everyone had to pay another $10, 15 20 dollars. Everyone for the game, bought ten packs in the As opposed to letting people just buy DLC. Yeah. How how on earth can you even make that? So some comparison? of the same people that are complaining about this are saying that. Well, it should just In be a little bit. seventy dollars or seventy five dollars and then yeah. and then that'll fix it. But that is that is forcing you to buy no. something more expensive. So I think it's important, you know, and I unfortunately I saw a lot of journalists. Um, mm -hmm. a few in particular with a pretty big following that absolutely snap reacted to this. They had this on their Twitter saying this is, it's over for this game because I just found out it's got microtransactions within seconds of it hitting. Yeah. You know, they don't, it's, it's sad when you see people who have a big pull, like big YouTubers or big, um, yeah. journalists or whoever and they don't even think about what they're doing to the developer. They just start well, slandering it all over the place. On top of that, you were telling me how you thought it was interesting that certain developers can get, you know, that kind of crap. And then other developers just yeah. get away with holding back content. And what were you saying about that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's only one example because I think we could find mm. a lot of examples in a lot of dimensions for mm. why this is not okay. So there's all kinds of things that are going on that are not okay that nobody says anything about. One yeah. of them is... Bungie is coming out with Destiny 2, and mm -hmm. they are essentially holding back massive packages of content mm -hmm. from all platforms except for PlayStation. Yeah. So that's like the opposite. That's You can't have this unless yeah. you have a PlayStation. Yeah, well, I don't know how massive it, it is. I, th I don't think it's that big, but I think the fact that you would hold anything back for a year or two yeah. years or so, you know some of the things i've heard from people that play destiny is you know they didn't they still haven't received some of the things they were supposed to get that were day and date on the playstation so oh, basically wow. it kind of seems like they're forcing you to go and have to buy a playstation in yeah. order to fully enjoy their game somehow that's okay that's not being talked about yeah nobody's well, boycotting for that nobody's nobody's up in arms about that but hey if if, uh, what was it, Monolith that makes? Monolith, yeah. Yeah, if they, if they decide to put in a few extra things to help you level a little faster because you don't have 300 hours to spend in a game, somehow that is not okay. That's it's, crazy. It's a, a lot of weird double standards for things out there. Yeah. And it's, you know, it goes back to the other thing, which is probably my bigger rant of the two rants, mm -hmm. which is you have all of these people, journalists, YouTubers, and otherwise, absolutely destroying games that are not even out for various yeah, reasons. a lot of negativity. This is very similar to the situation with Crackdown, it except is. that it, it's in a totally different arena. Mm -hmm. So this company is coming out with microtransactions in a game we haven't even seen yet, in a game that we were very excited about five minutes before finding out about <laughs> this, um, and all of a sudden it's just the end of the world, and this developer hasn't gotten a chance to show you what the microtransactions are for, mm -hmm. what the game is like. I mean, we don't even know. Just like Crackdown, you know, you didn't see certain footage. Literally, people are mad because they haven't seen a part of the game, so they're mm -hmm. just assuming it's not there. Everyone's very there. impatient. On top of being hypercritical about everything and everyone out there, we're impatient. So that's not we're a good so mixture. so impatient. <laughs> it's not a good mixture to have. Which is really not a good mixture, especially because these profits from things like microtransactions make the next game Give come out sequels. quicker. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do we want to slow things down by not giving options? You yeah. you have optional content that can actually push out a sequel it's faster, pretty, it's pretty even crazy. if you don't buy anything. Yeah. Like, that's a win-win for the people who aren't buying anything in the microtransaction. You're going to get a game faster because there are people who will. Mm, exactly. And, you know, it's happening everywhere. So there's even been... 
Um, you know, there's always alpha and beta testers for whether it's a game or a software update or mm. different types of technology. So you're seeing those people as well who obviously have signed saying, I will test this out. Mm -hmm. Technology launches with bugs. I'll help you find those bugs. I'll report those bugs. What are those people doing when the software first lands? Five minutes, they're in a forum saying it's absolutely horrible. Or worse, they're not in a forum. They're actually online just complaining. Or they're it. on social media. Yeah. Yeah, complaining and complaining. Mm -hmm. Instead of just reporting the issues. And it's like, okay, obviously this is a test yeah. of this. That's what you signed up for. You didn't sign mm -hmm. up for this to just see it early. This is a test. You're helping test it. Of course it yeah. has bugs. But those people are just out there, again, slandering the software that nobody's even seen yet. Yeah. And it just keeps happening in all these different areas. And it's so sad because it's hurting the industry so much to have yeah. that kind of thing happen. It's kind of like if you if you did some charity work to help the homeless or, or people that don't have things that you have or whatever it may be. And then you complain about them. It's that same kind of thing. Well, you yeah. signed up for this. You signed up for you the beta. Chose to do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just... There's been so much negativity on social media, whether it's about the footage that we have seen or haven't seen, mm -hmm. whether it's microtransactions, whether it's, you know, why this thing happened or why this decision was made or why is this company doing one thing and that company doing another. Yeah. People are giving advice to $500 billion companies about what they ought to that's, be doing. That's also pretty much. Um, people are complaining a lot about a lack of advertising for all different, whether it's a game or um, new hardwares that are mm -hmm. coming out. I'm hearing all kinds of people. Why aren't they advertising this? And it's... Like, everyone's mad about everything, and it's just, yeah. it it cracks me up in one sense, but it's also sad because it's hurting the entire industry. It yeah. definitely hurts developers. Developers need a profit. They need people to like their game. And for goodness sakes, they at least need somebody to try playing their game before they slam it to their 10,000 yeah. followers. Yeah, that would be nice if that could be just like a new rule, but that's it's never it's not going to happen that way. No. But, you know, I just wish that we would give more patience and more credit, or at least keep our mouths shut until we know more. Yeah. You know, it's like they could come out and it's all, it's just pink daggers is all it is. That's that's what you can pay for. Mm -hmm. I mean, then these people would be like, oh, well, in, in that case, I mean, I don't need a pink dagger, so we're yeah, good. Definitely. So we don't even know what it is and we don't know what it's going to cost and we don't know who will or won't buy it and we don't know what the effect is on the game, but we're pretty sure it's no effect on the game, so... Yeah. Um, or if it helps you level faster, I'm all for that. Uh, my I'm favorite game for in the that. Forza series is still Forza 5 because it had an option where you could level up a little faster, yeah. get things moving a little quicker. Back then, I mean, I'm not working that much right now, but back then I was working 60 to 70 hour work weeks. You I needed that. got to make the that. most of your time. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a lot of time to enjoy all the games that were coming out. Yeah. So yeah. I have a backlog now because of that. So. Well, if you're really a huge Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War fan... You're mm -hmm. planning on putting hundreds of hours into it. I'm in Mordor in my backlog right now, and I, I'm getting close to actually the 100-hour mark, yeah, and I actually I just haven't gotten a whole lot done. Um, so you expect that. You want yeah. that. You know, you don't even want to buy something to level up faster. You want to do it the right way. The microtransactions are for people who, for whatever reason, would rather move more quickly or Definitely. want to carry a purple sword around, you know, or whatever mm -hmm. it ends up being. So I think we should just give it a chance before... We do this again yeah. to somebody else who's also trying to make a profit and make content for us. On a happier note, um, shout out to Gordon. We are going to finally do our top yeah. 10 anticipated games. Um, and we've got them compiled into a list so mm. that you don't have to hear 20 games. Um, so should we start with 10? Uh, yeah. So... so we'll count down? Yeah. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? You go ahead. What is number 10? So number 10 is uh, PUBG. We've been hearing a lot about this. Player Unknown Battlegrounds uh, is the is the name of the game. And so far it's hit 6.5 million players. We just heard about Crazy. that recently. Which is incredible because it's not even a full game. It's Essentially it's like a beta it's right now. It's kind of like a beta, yeah. Yeah, it's an early access game. It's coming to uh, the Xbox uh, platform here pretty soon mm -hmm. as also an early access title. So it's not going to be the full-blown game. Um, that that is incredible that it's, it's already incredible. putting those numbers up. It looks like it's going to be a huge success. We've heard um, some rumblings that it's going to end up being a console exclusive for the Xbox, Xbox. platform. Mm -hmm. So that's a definite win there because a lot of people are saying the Xbox doesn't have a lot of exclusives. So this will be a really big one in their favor. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait to give it a shot here. Yeah, I've watched a lot of streaming of it and it looks really well, interesting. Well, actually, yeah, i got to give you props because you predicted that in our pre-E3 video. I did. I knew that was coming yeah. as an Xbox game. Yeah. After seeing how many people were playing it on PC, who was playing it mm -hmm. on PC, things that were being said about it, I definitely thought we were going to get it and I actually didn't even halfway anticipate the hype that would be 
the fact that it's oh, coming. Oh, it's grown. So then. everyone is so excited. It's breaking some records, really, for its category as far as how many people are playing, which yeah. will be really exciting to see when it comes to console what happens there. Um, mm -hmm. So number nine, Assassin's Creed Origins looks amazing well there's 4k videos out there that you can watch at certain uh, websites uh mm -hmm. that just look unbelievable it looks amazing incredibly detailed you can even see like yeah. the the fibers and the cloth and... i was so impressed with the linen mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i never thought well, i'd say that well i mean <laughs> you what you're probably impressed with is that it looks like real it looks like clothing. it's linen yeah like they showed somebody's arm and it just had oh yeah and there's like little holes detail. in it and you can see the through the holes and the uneven stitching that yeah. you see in linen i was so impressed by that and i feel like it's it's going to be an enhancement to the series which yeah. is already a really fun and really popular series. looks better than any of the other assassin's creed games by a lot yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's got an interesting landscape that also showcases how high the resolution is going to be yeah, as definitely. well so that'll be cool uh, number eight. So eight. Yeah, number eight. We actually have a tie at eight. So we have tie at eight. Zombie Days tie. Gone, Zombie Tie, uh, Days Gone, and State of Decay 2. So for Days Gone, uh, we're hearing a lot of people talk about needing more single-player games where True. you don't interact with other human beings, at least not in a real-world situation. <laughs> don't Even, we all want that on some level? I'm glad you, you laughed at that because <laughs> I definitely meant that to be a joke. Um, so this is good for all those people out there that really want to just play by yourself in a game. Uh, Can't plus, blame them. It's zombies, so how can it's you not zombies. love that? That's I don't care what anybody says. That's always going to be fun. They don't recommend being alone with zombies, but if that, <laughs> yeah. is, what, if that is what you want. Then. And then State of Decay 2. Um, State of Decay 1 is actually my favorite zombie-centric game that I've ever played. Wow. I even put it above Dead Rising 3 and Dead Rising 4 oh, and The Last of Us. Even The Last of Us is kind of like sort of not zombies it, it kind of is still yeah um it's sort of a zombie apocalypse type of game but state of k2 that it's gonna have a co-op mode this time so Which we'll be able really to play cool. yeah um and we'll be able to help each other and save each other's butts out there really that's handy gonna for be, that game yeah that's gonna be the the i think the best zombie experience we've had in a video game so far it's yeah. basically the walking dead but you're in a video game getting to play those characters. So. Very true. And you can so, permadie too, so permadeath. That is one thing that's mm -hmm. interesting about State of Decay. I'm in it in my backlog right now, yeah. although I'm a little distracted in Mordor. Um, and that's what's interesting about it is if you really mess up or you don't mm -hmm. pay attention to what you're doing, you can actually permanently kill a character that you wanted to play yeah. as, um, which is an interesting concept and such a cool way to bring in co-op so that hopefully Definitely. somebody who's a little better at zombie fighting, because I'm not that good at that, um, can maybe save me from like, killing my best character. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you can prevent me from losing my good people. Mm -hmm. So that is a really cool concept. And, you know, State of Decay is super popular. State of Decay 2 looks amazing. Yeah. It looks like a lot of fun and has the co-op aspect, which mm -hmm. I think we all look forward to. So you got Days Gone for the single player. You got State of Decay for, I'm assuming it has a single player as well, but also for the co-op. To wrap up the zombie tie. That's the zombie <laughs> tie. Um, number seven, of course, Shadow of War really excited for that because i'm playing mordor right now and it's so much fun and like mm. i said i have 100 hours in it i can't stop hiding in bushes yeah. attracting urks over the to me and killing so them yeah i mean i can't even get anywhere i'm like i don't even know how far i am in the story stealth is my favorite way to play that as well i think oh yeah. it's so much fun and you showed me a lot of shout out to you for showing me a lot <laughs> of really cool tips because um, I'm not really that great at stealth, but I've actually been able to master some really cool techniques, and I yeah. keep just finding myself just stuck in that game. So that'll so, help you when you get around to Hitman and Splinter Cell and games like that. I can't even imagine playing Hitman. Like, I'm so not stealthy that yeah. I just, that, <laughs> that game just seems like that such a giant nightmare for me. Um, maybe I have to stream that when I decide to do that yeah, so everybody should, yeah. can laugh at how many times I <laughs> alert everybody that I'm there. Um, so really excited for Shadow of War mm -hmm. with or without microtransactions. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I'll be done with Mordor by then. I'll have to get them both going at the same time. I'll have like 500 hours in each of them. Um, number six. Uh, number six. So God of War. Again, God of War. another single player only game. Mm -hmm. Now normally, just based off of the old God of Wars, I'm not a huge fan. I actually uh, don't really enjoy the games where you have to jam on the X button a million times to get all your kills. Mm -hmm. uh, and back when the first God of Wars came out, I always played them on hard. I always try to play games on the hardest difficulty. And that all that means is you're hitting that button even more. Mm -hmm. So that the game doesn't really get that much harder. You're just having to jam on that button to kill regular enemies more than you normally would. So mm -hmm. I normally wouldn't have been in, uh, into this game, but it looks like it's going to be one take, which means, kind of like our videos, um, yeah. start to finish, there's no cuts. There's no loading screens. It just... The, the just game, keeps going. from the moment you start, it just keeps going. Obviously, there'll be cutscenes, 
But supposedly the camera never cuts away to anything else that could happen. So the cutscene just blends. Blends right into the gameplay into seamlessly the, for the however game. many hours the game lasts. Wow. 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever it is. So looking forward to giving this God of War a shot again. And hopefully be I'll like it a lot more. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. That's kind of unique in the game world. Yeah. Um, so number five, I slid this in there because it's we actually don't know that this mm-hmm. is coming. Um, I've heard a lot of rumor or leak of a shadow of Tomb Raider, shadow of the Tomb Raider, speaking of shadows. Well, if Um, if we knew that was absolutely confirmed, that would be number one. Number one. There's nothing that would match Undoubtedly, I'm the biggest Tomb Raider fanatic in the world. Definitely. Um, So I'm hoping it's announced at Gamescom because... We got to see something, a trailer or something. We've seen things that look like it really is coming, and I really hope we get to see a trailer or something. So that will jump straight to my number one the second I can get confirmation. For right now, I would have made it all the way up to number five because I couldn't even not put it in there. Um... (laughs) Number four. Uh, Crackdown 3. Crackdown 3. Yeah. So with Crackdown 3, we've you know we've talked about this a lot in a lot of other videos. Um, it's one of our most anticipated because I can't wait to see, me personally, I do like these features. 4K, HDR, with cel-shaded graphics. We haven't seen that yet. It would be nice if True. the new Zelda was, was in 4K with HDR, but it's not. Still looks like a really uh, colorful, you know, beautiful looking game. Yeah. But... I've seen some screenshots recently of Crackdown that look really, really good. Really So good. I can't wait for the single-player experience on that. It has a co-op on top of the single-player, oh, cool. and then on top of that, a destructive multiplayer where you can blow up entire buildings, entire cities. So that'll be awesome. Hopefully they haven't downgraded it. Yeah. We'll see here at Gamescom. They have announced that they will be showing that at Gamescom, so that's awesome. Yeah. And that's, you know, me being not so great at stealth, destroying an entire city actually sounds like something be right I'm really great at. <laughs> um, Number three is my game of show from E3, Mm -hmm. which is Detroit. I'm still so excited for Detroit. Um, I feel like all of the decision-making of Detroit is going to be so cool. There's like ten different ways you can make every decision. It looks great. Well, being able to go back and do it again and again over and over again. Yeah. That really speaks to me because it's like... Really cool. In the Mass Effect games, I I was never okay with just... Sticking with whatever decision I made, I wanted gotta to gotta know what would have happened. Yeah, so that's yeah. awesome that the, this game is actually designed for you to do that, yeah. rather than it being something where you're manipulating the storyline by loading an old save. This is this is built in, so you're that's really cool. I saw a little clip a clip of people playing it, and the smiles that were on their faces while they were playing it was was pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be very unique and just a very lot unique, of fun. Yes. Again, another single player game. So another single yeah. player game. It's you. You're going to be lost in that game. Mm-hmm. That's another hundreds of hours game, watching all the possibilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two. Uh, Metro. Your so, game of show. Yeah, so that was the one I ended up settling on. Uh, primarily, I chose that one because I feel like Anthem is a really long uh, way away. Um, and yeah. and also, you know, EA is delayed games sometimes, so Anthem may end up slipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Metro would be the one that I'm really looking to showcase those beautiful 4K HDR graphics on yeah. the X because uh, mm-hmm. it is coming out on that platform later on. We haven't had a good release date le- uh, yet. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see more GamesCon. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be great. Looks really good. Looks mm-hmm. really detailed. Really fun. Looks like it's got some interesting things that you get to fight. Yeah. Um, number one, Anthem. Yeah. Anthem is a lot of people's number one. It's got to be there. Yeah. It looks like so much fun. It looks so unique. There's such a focus on exosuits, mm-hmm. um, which we saw actually in Dead Rising Four. I think is the only place I can <laughs> readily think of that I recently used an exosuit. Yeah. Um, but it seems like there's a lot of focus on leveling up the exosuit, which gives you something unique. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and if it's if it's what I think they're trying to aim at, it's going to be a Destiny killer. I think a lot of people are going to jump yeah. off of that game to uh, get Anthem. Go wear the other exosuits in, uh, in Anthem. Well, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so one thing that didn't make the top ten, but I guess deserves an honorable mention. Um, it's The Last of Us 2. Is Last of Us 2. Yeah, um, well, it's... It's, it's interesting. We got some new information about Last of Us 2. Last of Us Part 2 is the official title. Uh, it's basically not in full production right now. So they're making... Naughty Dog is the developer. They're making the, the Uncharted DLC that's going to be a standalone disc as well mm-hmm. uh, coming out here in, I think, actually in this month. So it'll be out yeah, here shortly. Um, and then after that, they said in this interview that a developer from Naughty Dog said they're basically going to give everybody a little bit of a vacation. So even when this game is done and it ships... They're still not going into full production on Last of Us 2. So that's kind of kind of an interesting thing. If you understand the way that developer has released their games in the past, 
you understand how long their development cycles are. It's on the longer side. It's on the four to five years side of things. So just doing math and deductive reasoning, there's a great chance Last of Us 2 is not going to be a this-gen game. Yeah. I see it as sure. quite possibly a, I don't know if they're going to call it PS5 or what they're going to call it, but a next-gen game that's going to come Very out later. Possibly. Yeah. Um, so it's a little little disappointing there. Um, that's why it didn't make the, the list for anybody that's that's uh, you know up in arms about that. Uh, but I mean, we'd like we'd love to hear your uh, top games. It doesn't have to be ten. Absolutely. I understand not everybody can can buy ten games, but a lot of these games are way out in the future too. So let us know, even any if it's a top quantity. three. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, any of the games that you most anticipate, we would love to see in the comments. We always mm-hmm. read the comments. We always interact in the comments. Definitely. We love seeing what your favorites are, especially when we're listing something. Yeah. Um, so we would love to know any or all of your anticipated. I really games. like the comments that from the people that we get, where they they get what we're trying to do with the channel. They get what we're trying yeah. to do with the show. True. They they fully seem to understand it. Uh, those are the comments that make me the happiest. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, is that it? Are we missing anything? Uh, well, you know, we have the the Lawbreakers update. So. Yeah. So this is something mm-hmm. we just kind of have to mention because we talked about been it, yeah. talking about it. Um. So Lawbreakers did launch August 8th, mm. and so far numbers are looking, it sounds like similar to the kind of the final beta numbers. Is that about right? Very close numbers, almost to the, the number. So yeah, wow. very yeah. small numbers out of it so, so far. So really, yeah, really small mm. performance so far, which, you know, again, I want to see every game succeed because for the industry as a whole, that's... Yeah, we've said before, we don't want any developer to fail. We don't want anyone to lose their jobs. That's ridiculous to feel that type of way when we're talking about video games, right. to be that aggressive and that angry over things that people have said. Yeah. But again, it's just comments out of one person's mouth. It's it's not the same to me as like what Bungie is doing with content and holding it back. To yeah. me, that's a lot. That's a lot worse. Yeah. So, so essentially, what you're saying is the only reason we would even comment on this game not doing well is just because of, you know, Cliff Blazinski just being. Yeah, really a, aggressive. A lot of people, a lot of people are people. almost kind of rejoicing that it seems to be a flop, at least out yeah. of the gate. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, it may end up going free to play, which will probably breathe sure. life into the game. Yeah. So hopefully they can salvage things there for people that like first person shooters and yeah. fast, hardcore traversal, because skilled. that's the way it's now being marketed again. Lots of, yeah, it's back to being marketed back. as you must be skilled. You have to be incredibly hardcore and very, very good at first person shooters. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, so interesting to see, and, mm. you know, it, it seemed like maybe there was a marketing strategy in being so aggressive and out there with the social media stuff, and so the I guess the only positive thing is we don't want that to be rewarded. We don't want that to work. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's kind of our final comment from a lawbreaker standpoint, unless yeah. something majorly changes. Um, that's it, though. That's right? pretty much it, yeah. Anything. So... Give this video a like, share it with your friends, um, click the bell on. If you don't have the bell on, you'll get notifications right when we drop a video. We are going to do lots of coverage for mm-hmm. Gamescom. So Follow us on Twitter as well. There. How do you say Follow our Follow us on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. We are at Avers underscore G4G Media mm-hmm. and at Moxie underscore G4G Media. Definitely. They are linked in the description as well. Well, we'll be um, doing streaming as well. You started streaming we recently. We have been doing some and then streaming. I'm lucky enough to get to co-stream with you. It's been and a lot of fun. Coaster anybody that so watches cool. us is lucky enough that I don't have my camera on. Because clearly you don't want to see me. Yeah. Uh, so, But you'll have your camera on. So you get entertainment over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get skill over oh, here. Oh, no, I'm not very good. So that's, that's, that's sure. pretty cool. Like, the co-stream is pretty cool. Because if you want to see how you should play the game, you watch yours. Now you set a wanna high bar, but yeah. if you want to see some hilarious <laughs> entertainment, then you watch mine. And it works out pretty well. Co-streaming is the coolest thing in the world. It is awesome. I think that is so cool. Yeah, it makes it really good. So, probably streaming sometime this weekend stay tuned Most we likely. always drop it on twitter so if you follow us on twitter we will always send the link over to our stream if we do a stream yeah. so um lots of new content coming lots of different kinds of content coming other new kinds of content gamescom's 10 days away gamescom's 10 days away now so mm-hmm. we will be doing lots and lots of coverage for gamescom so if you don't have the bell on and you want to get all those notifications turn the bell on um and if you don't mind giving us a like giving us a comment share this video with your friends Thanks for watching.